Lord be with you. Good morning and a warm welcome. Good to see all of you here today, uh, those of you in person as well as those online. My name is Glenn Schleck, senior pastor here, and it is good to gather. Uh, a special welcome to those visiting with us here again today. And as we gather, we know a number of things are, are simply givens for us. That as we gather, we know we're not alone. The Lord is right here in the midst of us when we speak and begin with the invocation. Those words take us back to our baptism and remind us of our place in the family of God and to know that, that He is here and what a gift that is in and of itself. This morning, as we continue our summer series, uh, Living in Tension, we are working our way through now into 1 Kings and today we're going to hear about the passing of the baton from King David to Solomon and some good stuff that we're going to hear in, in David's charge to his son Solomon, some things that we can very much take to heart ourselves. So with that, let's begin with a word of prayer. Would you join me? Gracious God, Heavenly Father, as we come today to hear again your charge, your word to us. I pray that you will give us an openness to receive it. Open ears, open hearts, open minds, open lives. Lord, we are your people who desire to follow you in every regard. And so as we gather in this time of worship, we come with that expectation that we are going to hear from you again today. So with that, and with that anticipation, we, we place ourselves and our time together into your loving hands, all in that precious and powerful name of Jesus, our Lord and our Savior. Amen. I invite all who are able to please stand for the invocation and our opening hymn. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. From Psalm 145, all your works praise you, Lord. Your faithful people extol you. They tell of the glory of your kingdom and speak of your might. Your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, and your dominion endures through all generations. The Lord upholds all who fall and lifts up all who are bowed down. You, O 
open your hand and satisfy the, de the desires of every living thing. The Lord is near to all who call on him. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father, first in the quiet of our hearts, and then together in the spoken confession. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God in his mercy has given his son to die for you, and for his sake God forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of the word, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray together. Heavenly Father, though we do not deserve your goodness, still you provide for all our needs of body and soul. Grant us your Holy Spirit, that we may acknowledge your gifts, give thanks for all your benefits, and serve you in willing obedience. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated as we hear from God in his word. The Old Testament reading is from 1 Kings chapter 2, verses 1 through 4 and 10 through 12. When the time drew near for David to die, he gave a charge to Solomon, his son. I am about to go the way of all the earth, he said, so be strong, act like a man, and observe what Lord, the Lord your God requires. Walk in obedience to him and keep his decrees and commands, his laws and regulations, as written in the law of Moses. Do this so that you may prosper in all you do and wherever you go and that the Lord may keep his promise to me. If your descendants watch how they live, and if they walk faithfully before me with all their heart and soul, you will never fail to have a successor on the throne of Israel. Then David rested with his ancestors and was buried in the city of David. He had reigned 40 years over Israel, seven years in Hebron, and 33 in Jerusalem. So Solomon sat on the throne of his father David, and his rule was firmly established. This is the word of the Lord. The epistle reading is from 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verses 1 through 5. There is no need for me to write to you about this service to the Lord's people, for I know your eagerness to help, and I have been boasting about it to the Macedonians, telling them that since last year, you and Achaia were ready to give, and your enthusiasm has stirred most of them to action. But I am sending the brothers in order that our boasting about you in this matter should not prove hollow, but that you may be ready, as I said you would be. For if any Macedonians come with me and find you unprepared, we, not to say anything about you, would be ashamed of having been so confident. So I thought it necessary to urge the brothers to visit you in advance and finish the arrangements for the generous gift you had promised. Then it will be ready as a generous gift, not as one grudgingly given. This is the word of the Lord. 
Please stand for the reading of the gospel. The gospel reading is from Mark chapter 6, verses 6 through 13. Then Jesus went around, teaching from village to village, calling the twelve to him. He began to send them out two by two and gave them authority over impure spirits. These were his instructions. Take nothing for the journey except a staff, no bread, no bag, no money in your belts. Wear sandals, but not an extra shirt. Whenever you enter a house, stay there until you leave that town. And if any place will not welcome you or listen to you, leave that place and shake the dust off your feet as a testimony against them. They went out and preached that people should repent. They drove out many demons and anointed many sick people with oil and healed them. This is the gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. And if I could have the children come on forward for this morning's children's message and any parents or adults that want to join, you're welcome as well. All right, don't even sit down, because we're running a race this morning. So I need everyone to spread out from that end to this end. I'm going to start over here. And what you need to do is spread out. Go down. Hands go all the way down. We're going to run our most dramatic race. You got to go like this, God. Go. And then you hand it to the next person. Kate, do you want to do it? No. You two together, run over there. Run, 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 run. Run, 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 run. <laughs> run. <laughs> All right, now Aiden, you go around the whole building and come back. I'm kidding. OK, everyone can sit down right here. You guys don't seem very tired. I do. It's fine. OK, so. If I had to run from that end all the way over there, that would have been a lot of work for Miss Martha. But thankfully, I had all your help, and we passed the baton, and we finished that race way quicker than Miss Martha could have done on her own. Because the thing is, we, this is so cheesy, but we are on the same team. We are on God's team together, and it is such a gift because it reminds us that we aren't alone that through all the things that we do, we have our brothers and sisters in Christ, we have our family of God to be with us in all things. And this week, we're finally wrapping up David. We've been talking about David for weeks and weeks, and, and the good things he did, and the bad things he did, and all the things we get to celebrate his life and what he did for God. And now it's time for David to pass the baton to Solomon. And Solomon's going to be in charge now of the Israelites. And we get to see how God continues to work through people. That from one person to the next person to the next person, now to all of us in here, God is still doing incredible, amazing things in the world. And we get to be part of it, which is so, so, so cool. So you have a job this week. You get to run for God. You don't have to actually run. Miss Martha's not going to actually run. But you get to remind people that they are so loved by God and that they get to be part of God's team, which is the best team to be on. So as we continue to watch the Olympics, get to celebrate that with our country, we also get to see how the whole world is together as God's big family and we get to love people around us. So let's fold our hands, bow our heads, and you can repeat after me. Dear God, thank you so much for making us part of your team. Help us to share your love with everyone. Amen. Oh, you can go sit down. <laughs> so, as many of you have probably noticed over the last week, and it's unfortunate, but the the Summer Olympics this year have been kind of tainted a bit with some negative political maneuvering and all these shenanigans that we continue to, to live with and deal with. Uh, things like masks and messages and uh, the U.S. flag controversy and no fans in the stands and viewership down dramatically from previous Olympics and on and on it goes. And yet, 
I have at least tuned in on occasion. I just can't help myself. Wanting to watch some of these amazing athletes of the world do things that I cannot even imagine doing. And I'm not going to ask for favorite events, but I am I'm curious how many of you do enjoy the track events, 100, 200, 400, and more, and the relays and all that. Anybody enjoy those? They're kind of fun. They are fun to watch. And I, not being, and I know this will surprise most of you, but not being a guy who likes running or who cannot run very fast and never could, I am amazed that someone can run the length of a football field and under 10 seconds, or around the track in about 40. Crazy, just crazy. But the, the relay, as Martha started with the kids this morning, the relay races provide for us a wonderful example and tie in to what we are hearing about today with the passing of the baton from King David to his son Solomon. And what I included in today's reading was a relatively, by comparison, what we've done through the summer, relatively short reading from 1 Kings chapter 2. And I did that because I really wanted to hone in and focus on the main point, which essentially was that charge that David gave to Solomon, that passing of the baton when it came to Solomon becoming king and the leadership of God's people. Now, next week we are going to circle back because there was a whole lot more going on leading up to the passing of the baton and a number of things that followed once Solomon took the throne that were not very pretty. That too shouldn't surprise us at all. That's been a part of the story of God's people and of God's story of working with people like us who are at times a real mess but not giving up on us. But that mess we'll deal with next week. For today, what we hear is that David realizes he's about to die. He doesn't have much longer. So from his bed, he calls his son Solomon to come in, and he passes the baton. He gives David this charge, or he gives Solomon this charge. Very simple, very straightforward. Here it is in verse 2. Be strong, be a man, do what the Lord has commanded. That's it. Be strong, be a man, do what the Lord has commanded. Be strong. What does it mean to be strong? Where does our strength come from? How does that, or what does that strength look like? I want to give you a moment to, to wrap yourselves around this a little bit as we step through these three parts of David's charge, his passing the baton to Solomon. Because in this passing of the baton to Solomon, there's a lot that connects with us. So the first, be strong. What does that mean? What comes to mind for you? I'm going to give you a moment to think about this. If you're comfortable talking with the people around you, feel free to do that. Strength. What is it? Where is it from? What's it look like? Take a moment, please.
Okay, what you got? Strength. Be strong. What does that look like? What is that all about? Jim? Okay, keep at it. Endurance. Don't stop. Keep going. Good? The other Jim? Where does it come from? It comes from the Lord. And I would guess that all of us who are gathered here would say, oh, yeah, I know that verse. I, I realize that. That is foundational for me. My strength comes from the Lord. What else about strength? Mary? Yeah, you've got, you've got what you believe and I would say for us, that's very particular. It's not just what y'all believe, whatever that may be, right? But it's belief in the truth with a capital T, which we know is Jesus. And it's standing strong in that which we believe. Yeah, wonderful. Joe. Stand firm, do hard things. I mean, life's not going to be a cakewalk for us. It's not going to be a walk, the 400-yard walk. No, it's going to be hard. Life is going to be hard for all of us, and for us as Christians in particular. It's going to be hard for lots of different reasons because of that faith on which we stand. Stand firm, do hard things, do right things. Gene. Okay, be committed and don't be swayed by outside pressures. And maybe I would say to what I just said, non-capital T truth stuff. Don't be swayed by what we don't hear and know from, from our Lord. That there's a, a verse, I'll get to you here in a second, Art, uh, a verse that speaks to that. St. Paul, we get this throughout Scripture, different encouragements, urgings to be strong, don't we? It's all over the place. Uh, one of those that came to mind that, that ties into what you had said, Gene, actually a couple of these here is from St. Paul in Ephesians 4. Let me read these couple of verses, 14 and 15. St. Paul wrote, no longer, and this is about, again, being strong. No longer be infants tossed back and forth by the waves and blown here and there by every wind of teaching and by the cunning and craftiness of people in their deceitful scheming. Instead, speak the truth in love. So don't let yourself be tossed around willy-nilly, right? Stand for something. Stand for truth. Stand for what we know in Christ Jesus. Good. Art. Thank you. All right. Political correctness isn't necessarily correctness. Again, we go back to the source and what is truth? What, what is correct, appropriate, proper for us in our lives and in our world? And by that, the judge the basis that we look to is, is right here in the Word. Good? So on the other hand, Bonnie? Stand strong in your faith so you're able to step out of your comfort zone. Okay, stand strong in your faith so you're able to step out of your comfort zone. So it, it kind of ties into some of the, the tough things that we are called to do. It's not simply go through life, be comfortable, do what suits you, but stand firm on what we know to be truth so we can step out of that comfort zone for the sake of other people. That is strength. Good. David. To have courage in the face of adversity. To have the face of adversity. I was thinking someone might bring that up too. I have another passage of Scripture that, again, and this more exemplifying the fact that we get this charge, not just from David to Solomon, the passing of the baton here. It's all over the place. And this one that ties into the, the be courageous 
Anybody want to guess where I went? A little Bible trivia. Joshua 1, passing the baton from Moses to Joshua. Similar thing that speaks over the top to strength. I, got, I could not do this without speaking these verses. So Joshua 1, 7 and 9. And again, this is God speaking to Joshua, but it's the handoff from Moses to Joshua. Be strong and very courageous. Listen to parallels here. Be careful to obey all the law my servant Moses gave you. Do not turn from the left or the right, that you may succeed wherever you go. Do not let this book of the law depart from your mouth. Meditate on it day and night, that you may be careful to do everything written in it. Then you will be prosperous and successful. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. Be strong. Be strong. Be a man. Second part of the charge. Be a man, David said to Solomon. And in, in our context, and as we look to connect it to us here today, uh, I'm gonna, I think it's appropriate, I think it's okay to say, be a man, be a woman. And again, I'm going to ask you guys to think on this. So what does this mean in the best of ways within that context? You hear, be a man, be a woman. I think there may be a little bit of overlap with a be strong, and that's okay. But again, take a moment to think on that. If you're comfortable talking, have at it. All right, where was David going with this? To Solomon, to us. What's happening here? Be a man, be a woman. Greg. Okay, so God created us as human beings distinct from the rest of creation, the animal kingdom. We have gifts, we have abilities, particular things that God enables us to do as human beings. Do them. Use those gifts. Use those opportunities and abilities that our Creator has endowed us with. Okay? What else is going on here? Larry. Okay, don't hide under a bush or under a rock when things get tough, right? Be a man. Be a woman. Don't go cowering. Don't go hiding. Take them on. Okay? What else do we have here? Gary. Uh, so it's not just about you, but it's about others. It's about leadership. Living in community. Being in community. Uh, would that be you know, be a husband, be a wife, be a friend, be a coworker, be a boss, be a teammate. Be that in the best sense of whatever that may be in community. Good, good. What else do we have? Jim. 
Okay, do not shirk responsibility. Do what you have been called and accounted on to do. Okay? Be a man, be a woman. Mike. Okay, to go back to Genesis, God created man in his image. He created humankind in his image. And so for this charge, David was saying, be godly. Be as God created you to be. Be like him. Be like him. Okay? Joe. And I really think that's where a big part really underlying this whole statement, short statement, but I think that's where, where David and the Lord was going with that. That it's... David was referred to, as, as Joe said, called a man after God's own heart. David was the man throughout Scripture. He was the man that God had appointed and when he gives that charge to Solomon, or when we hear that charge, be a man, be a woman, it is within the context of faith. Be a man of God. Be a woman of God. Be a man of faith, a woman of faith. I think absolutely that underlies what this charge is all about. Because it's that, isn't it, which gives us our identity. That determines who we are as men and women of God in Christ Jesus, created as we have been, in the image of God, called by God to live out our lives in the world, not shirking responsibility, not hiding, but standing up, being that voice of truth, spoken in love to the world in which we live. And to do that within the context of community. Over and over again. Who are called out as people that we need to look out for in the scripture. For the poor and the oppressed, the widows and the orphans. Being a man, being a woman of God and of faith means that we are called to servant leadership, to care for others in our lives, not just looking out for number one. But it's giving ourselves away, giving, and it's not us we're giving away, but it's Christ and his love that we are giving away through all that we do. So it's, it's not just about ourselves. This was not just about Solomon. This was about others. And this is for one another. Be a man. Be a woman. Third part in this. Do what the Lord has commanded. And this one David actually expounds on a little bit. And why does he do that? Exactly what we ended up talking about here to remind us that this is not just about us. It's not just about me. It's not just about you. It's not about defining life in a way that feels right for me or good for me. There's another standard. There's another truth. There's another one that we look to in all of this. It's coming back to our foundation the foundation that we are standing on and the foundation that we are standing for. That's what explains life. That's what explains who we are and what we're here for. Uh, here's, I'm not going to have you talk about this one. Uh, here's what David went on to explain about this. Just a single verse in verse 3. 
So he said, do what the Lord has commanded. And here it is. Walk in his ways and keep his decrees and commands, his laws and requirements as written in the law of Moses. It's simple. It's clear. And it grounds us firmly in the Lord and what he has done and what he's continuing to do in our lives, in our world, even still today, over and over throughout his word. So, who is it that's passing the baton? Not a trick question. David. It's David who's passing the baton here. And let me ask this. These also are not trick questions. Was David strong? Give me a head nod. Was David strong? Yeah. Was David a man? Yeah. Did David do what the Lord commanded? Yeah. Did he fail in any of those areas? Did he fail in all of those areas? Yeah, he did. We go back last week, big failure on every front in that Bathsheba event. But you read all of God's story, David's entire life, there were plenty of other moments. That was a big one that we all remember and look to. But you read through, there was, there was little stuff here and there. There were some other bigger things where he wasn't strong, where he wasn't a man, where he did not do what the Lord had commanded. So, knowing that, does that disqualify David from having the authority to pass the baton and tell his son Solomon, now Solomon, be strong, be a man, do what the Lord commanded. Does that disqualify him from doing that? No, it doesn't. David knew in his heart who he was. He was a man after God's own heart. Even in those dark times when he really messed up and really failed, did God love David throughout all of that? We know he did. We know he did. David was a man after God's own heart. And did David continue to strive with the Lord's help to be godly, to be, as we would phrase it in A.D. language, Christ-like? Yeah, he did. He did. So, I want us to think about the, the passing of the baton in two ways here as we wrap up today. Uh, first, that we're on the receiving end of a baton being passed. David's charge to us is the same. We're being told today, be strong, be a man, be a woman, do what the Lord has commanded. So, are all of you all of that? Are all of you all of that? You know, I look out here, and I see y'all, and I have to say, yes, you are all of that. You and I, like David, we have our moments, good and bad. We're strong. I look, I see a lot of strength right here. I see some amazing men and women of faith. And I see people who, with the Holy Spirit's help and work in you, continually strive to live godly and Christ-like lives. And it's a pretty awesome thing to see. 
yeah, we blow it. We hide under a rock sometimes or under that bush. And yet, does the Lord still love us? You bet he does. That we know as we understand what our identity and our purpose is, that we are men and women after God's own heart, created in his image, gifted, blessed with all sorts of things in a complementary way. No one of us has all the stuff that makes whatever a perfect person might be. But we're in this together. We need one another. And the Lord came into our world to take on this human flesh in perfect form, sinless form, to live the life that we couldn't, to die the death that we should have, to come to life again, to give us life. And by the grace of God, we are strong. We are men and women of faith. We do and strive for what the Lord has commanded of us. We're also here to pass the baton. We're here to pass it on to others, to children, to other people in our lives. And as we know, even those of us who are not great track stars, we know enough that a good handoff is essential for a good race. And so, parents, bring your kids to worship every week. Pray with them every night before they go to bed. Pray with them when they get up in the morning. Pray with them before you eat, after you eat. Instill in them when they go through some tough stuff or there's a big thing coming up, pray with them. And let them know that, that this relationship that we have with the God who created all of us is a loving relationship. The desires of our God are that we be strong, we be his men, his women, his children, that we do what it is that the Lord commanded. And for you parents, instill in your kids that first instinct, no matter what may be going on, that it is to pray, to talk to the Lord about what it is that's going on. For all of us, be in the Word, listen to what God has to say to us, Live life with the Holy Spirit's help in God-pleasing ways. As we've talked about in, in weeks past, fight the temptation. Stand strong against that temptation that's going to come our way day in and day out. And talk about Jesus with others. Not in a Bible-thumping, brow-beating sort of way, but speaking that truth in love with one another. Sharing with the people in these crazy uncertain times that we're still living in that we are grounded in one who gives us hope who's provided forgiveness when we do blow it who promises to walk with us and who says be strong and very courageous because I am going to be with you always as Jesus said to the very end of the age. Now, some of you may be here saying, oh man, my kids are all grown, they're grown, I don't have kids, I'm not married. What about you? Same thing. We're family here. This is family. We are a community of faith who are here together. Love the kids who are here. Find out what their names are. Talk to them, even if you have to ask them every week what their name is. That's all right. I do that for some of you, you know. Get to know them. Help the parents when they're in a spot. 
we're here with one another, for one another. It's passing the baton. We have kids in worship, and very intentionally so, because we need those kids, and those kids need us. Our school is a passing the baton ministry that is amazing. And the opportunity for all of our teachers, all of our staff to keep passing that baton, to talk of Jesus day in and day out, while these kids get an amazing academic education with all sorts of fun extracurriculars that are a part of this as well. We are a part of passing the baton with the offerings we give, the gifts we give, the work we do as we carry out what God has called us to do and be using our gifts and abilities and talents. It's passing the baton. We've received it. We pass it. It's an awesome thing. And it's quite a race, as all of you know. So the what now for today? Simple, short and sweet. As you might expect, the insert in your uh, bulletin, pass the baton, be strong, be a man or be a woman, do what the Lord has commanded. And we do it in the joy of the Lord. Amen. And that peace of God, a peace that at times goes beyond our understanding, let it guard our hearts and our minds through faith in Christ Jesus, today and always. Amen. I invite all who are able to please stand. We join in making confession of our faith this morning. And which creed is it that we have? That one. We are going to speak. The Apostles' Creed, 
these truths drawn from that foundation of God's truth and His Word that the people of God have been speaking and professing for hundreds of years. We're blessed to be among those saints, among those people. And we add our voice with those who have gone before us and with those who stand with us as sisters and brothers in our Lord Jesus. So join me as we confess our faith together. I believe in God. Whoops, sorry. Nicene. I read it wrong. Okay, here we go again. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again, according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. You may be seated as we continue with our time of offering. And that is a moment that we take each week, intentionally, deliberately so, to pause, to remember that the offering has always been a part of living in relationship with God, the giver of all things, that we recognize and remember again that all we have, all we are, they're from God's hand, the people, the material blessings, and so much more. And so we stop and say, thank you, Lord. The gifts we give, the offerings we give, whether those are in in actual envelopes and checks that we've brought and left here in the, the offering baskets or that we give online, it all does the same thing. It is not funding the church, but is giving thanks to God as we offer him our thanks and let his mission that he's entrusted to us here move forward to the very best of our ability. So with that, let's remember and reiterate some of these beautiful promises that God gives to us about the opportunity we have to give. Friends in Christ, we know that all we have, all we are, and all we do is a gift from God. God does not need our gifts, but he knows that life is better when we share generously from all that we have of our time, talents, and treasures. As we give our offerings, a tenth or so, we are giving thanks to God for his abundant gifts to us. Lord God, Help us to freely share of our time, talents, and treasures for the sake of the gospel. Amen. In our prayers today, we remember the the following individuals in particular. For Jim and Sue Fallon's grandson, Caleb, a 30-year-old in Milwaukee, who was hospitalized with lung inflammation uh, about a week or so ago. For Shirley Gonzalez, who just over a week ago started a non-chemo, non-radiation drug for the tumor she has, prayers for healing and for patients through this. For a former Emanuel Lutheran School student, Tyler Adams, who was in a uh, major accident and is dealing with some 
uh, very serious injuries, including a head injury and others. We pray for Jody Miner's sister, Chris, in Sterling, who's been dealing with multiple and very serious health-related issues throughout this year. Er, excuse me, earlier this week, she was flown to Swedish Hospital and was put on a ventilator. Pray for Eva Knight's friend, Karen, in Omaha, who's dealing with serious mental and physical issues. For Jeff and Jackie Diener's son, Anton, in Aurora, as he deals with some heavy challenges with life and job and family, prayers for guidance. For friends of Laura Owens, whose oldest son was just diagnosed with leukemia, prayers for strength during this confusing time and for healing for this young man. And then uh, a number of our family have experienced death. Uh, for Linda Boudin's sister and her family had the death of her sister's husband last Sunday night. For the family of Janet Brinkhoff, a dear friend of Joe and Bob Rubel, who passed away Wednesday evening, prayers for comfort and peace for the family as they mourned the loss of this loved one and for safe travel for Bob and Joe as they went back to Illinois for the funeral. And then for a professor of Martha Samanko's, whose wife passed away after a long bout with cancer about a week and a half ago. Prayers of thanksgiving for Jason Bruckhausen's successful surgery uh, regarding his neck and his back. Uh, prayers of thanks with Leslie Husingfeld, who celebrates her birthday today. And we continue to pray for our school, school enrollment, and for our teachers as they prepare to return back once again in a matter of days. So let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Lord God, Heavenly Father, you are a God who is here with us, a God who has given us a charge, passed the baton to us, urging us to be strong, to be your people, and to listen to you, to do what you've asked us to do. Lord, help us in every regard. And in that in that vein, we lift up all of these that we have mentioned as well as other people, circumstances in our lives that have gone unspoken today, but we've carried into this time of worship very much on our hearts and our minds. As the God you are, a God who created us, gifted us, blessed us as you have, you know the things going on in our life and our world far better than we. So we commend these people and these matters to you and your loving care, praying for your help and for you to provide as you know best. Lord, in your mercy, for those things over which we are, are thankful and joy-filled, we know these flow from your hand and your heart as well. So for successful surgeries, for healing to come, for birthdays, anniversaries, and, and other times of celebration, we offer them to you as well. Grateful that you are here in our midst, celebrating with us. Lord, in your mercy, for our ministries together, we lift up once again our school, our staff. We pray for open doors more and more for people in our community to see and recognize what is offered here. And the amazing gift that a, a Lutheran education can be. So we pray that in these days to come, you would draw many, many more to this place to hear and to learn and to grow in you. We pray for all of our ministries as we begin making plans for the fall. Help us in the events going on, the activities upcoming, that we would keep your Son front and center in everything we are and do that many more might hear your story of your love and the hope we have in you. Lord, in your mercy. And we pray for our nation and for our world. We lift up President Biden and other world leaders. We pray for those in our government, elected and appointed throughout every level of government. Lord, help them to govern wisely and well in the midst of these uh, confusing and very challenging times. Pray that you would help them to, to look to the one who's here to lead us through, who look to you, who stand on the foundation of your word and your truth in their governing of the affairs of our country. We also lift up those who are on the front lines fighting for things necessary, 
for those in healthcare professions, for our firefighters and first responders, for those serving in law enforcement, and those serving in various branches of our armed forces. Lord, thank you for these, one and all. And we pray for these men and women who are willing to put their lives on the line, put themselves in harm's way for our health, our safety, the freedoms we enjoy. Lord, continue to protect them and watch over them as they carry out their duties. Lord, in your mercy, into your hands, O oh Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who has also taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And as we come at our Lord's invitation to his table, to receive the gifts that he knows we need, gifts that enable us to be strong, to be his men and women, and to do all that he has commanded. We come with humbleness. We come with open hearts to receive his grace, his forgiveness, his love, and his strength once again. Our Lord Jesus Christ, in the night that he was betrayed, took bread. When he had given thanks, he broke it, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take and eat. This is my body, given for you, do this in remembrance of me. In the same way also, after supper, he took the cup. When he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant that is poured out for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. If there are any of you here today wondering whether or not you should come and receive the Lord's Supper, would you ask yourself these four questions? First, do you know Jesus? Do you believe in him? Trust in him as your Lord and Savior. Second, do you acknowledge the sin and brokenness in your own heart and in your own life and desire the forgiveness and the healing that he promises here? Third, do you believe our Lord's words, his promises, beyond our ability to completely understand how he does it, but to know that what we receive today goes far beyond just bread and wine? and is also the very body and blood of Jesus. And finally, fourth, as we've been talking, would it be your intention with the Holy Spirit at work in your heart that you would seek to live God-pleasing and Christ-like lives? If you answered yes to these questions, this gift is for you. We'll have our two serving stations on either end of the communion rail. Children and young people not yet instructed in the Lord's Supper, you're invited to come for a blessing or if there are adults who would prefer simply to receive a blessing today, please come with your hands folded to indicate that. Otherwise, have your hands cupped to receive the bread. My friends, the peace of the Lord be with you always.
invite all who are able to please stand. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve you steadfast in true faith, now and for life everlasting. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you his peace. Amen. You would please be seated for just a moment. Thank you once again for joining, and I pray that this charge that David has given, had given to Solomon, and by extension to us as well, will be something we seek, strive for, and live in throughout this week to come. As far as announcements, this morning, uh, first Sunday of the month, so we have our community assistance door offering, and those are dollars that go toward helping folks here in our community of faith. And by and large, uh, people in the community at large who come to us on a daily basis with needs for help with rent and utilities and lodging and food and all of that. So I look for Roger out in the atrium and invite you to give as you are so inclined. Uh, Beyond that, just encourage you to stay up on top with my email updates. Those play, that's the best place to go as far as what is coming up, what's happening, how to engage, how to give, how to serve how to be God's people for these days. So if you're not on that email list but would like to be, stop at the information station, coffee cart, and grab one of the cards, fill it out, check the appropriate boxes, leave it in one of the offering baskets. We'll get you added to it for those online. Just reach out to us by email and we'll get you included. Next week, as I had alluded to, uh, the summer series Living in Tension, we're going to take a closer look at Solomon and how he followed God kind of a little iffy on some of the stuff that was going on, but some things I think we'll be able to relate to. So, hope to see you again next week. And for now, go in peace. Serve the Lord.